Well, Mom's Maybelline was, uh, was when I was a kid, somebody I saw on the Smothers Brothers and someone I saw on all the shows, you know, the daytime shows, the Merv Griffith show, and she told these really interesting jokes that I liked. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I got the Mark Twain Award. And I said to someone, how come there's not a Mom's Mabley Award? And I'd done her from time to time through my career before, uh, before I left Berkeley. I did a whole show about her and did all of her material. And I thought, well, I'll go come back to Broadway and I'll do it on Broadway. And then I got lazy. It's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And then I decided I was going to kick it up again. And then I thought, well, if I do that, will people know who she is? And the answer was no. So I thought, well, what if I make a documentary? Because, you know, people make documentaries. I'm going to make a documentary. Oh, what a schmuck. <laughs> what a silly girl. Uh, so I crowdfunded some of it because I ran out of money. Um, and I didn't realize how much people would charge to be able to use her, her work on the records and, and uh, on television stuff. And then I went to um, Hugh Hefner. And I said, man, you have this great piece that has her. I'm doing this documentary. I know it's expensive, but is there anything, any way you can help me out here? Help, just, just a little bit help me out. And he and I had been friends for, for many, many years. And he said, yeah, we can help you out. We're still waiting for the bill. He let us have that piece. He said, I love that you're making this. I love that you're making this shit. And I said to him, what was she like? And he said, she was the funniest person ever, ever. You know, he said, but her singing that song. This was Abraham Martin and John. Abraham Martin and John, and with Sammy Davis being in the audience, and you know who else is in the audience? My God, uh, Paul Mooney is also in that. No. Yes. Look, go back and look at that shot. He is sitting right on the side. Paul Mooney is sitting there. I didn't know. That. Um, and talking about this woman who was quite out as a gay woman, dressed as a man, sent out postcards that said, Merry Christmas from Mr. Moms. I mean, it's like, and so I decided to make, I was gonna do it with HBO. And we had a difference of opinion of what should be there. Cause I, I wanted to put uh, animation in it in lieu of things that we couldn't get. And so there was some question as to whether that would work and what a silly idea and maybe no, no, no. And I said, well, I really think it's a, a I think I should do it this way. This way. Well, no, we feel you should be doing moms maybe in the middle of the thing. I said, why would I do her in the middle of showing her? That doesn't make any, so we, we went our separate way. Uh, and so it, it was me having to find money to, to do it. But I did it. And then when they saw it ultimately, uh, or subsequently, they said, we'd love to buy it, but at half the price. And I said, okay. Because it was more important, this is terrible because it's really egotistical. It was really important to me that, that they came back and said, yeah, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Because some folks had kind of put out there that it probably wasn't going to be any good, wasn't going to be jack shit, and because, you know. And one of them called <laughs> after she saw it, because she was working with somebody else that we had worked with. And the woman that I had been working with came and said, well, she, they want to see it. And I said, no, no, wait three weeks. Don't show it to them, wait three weeks. Wait three weeks. She said, can I show him now? I said, yeah, you show him now. So at 12.45, my phone rings that night after they saw it. 
And basically they said, you made it without us, you fucker. You, I, we didn't think you'd do it. it. Must have made you feel pretty good. Oh, honey. My head got this big. <laughs> my head got, I couldn't even get in the room. I was so, because I just, it wasn't about me. It was about her. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't gonna put stuff in about her until I knew it for sure. Like I, I wanted, I needed to know for sure that she was out and gay. Can't just do it as a rumor. Right. You needed to know, you know. And so we found all the cooperation for it. And then we, you know, found all the folks, uh, you know, some folks were really pissed at her, really angry at her. Her sister-in-law was really mad at her. And her sister-in-law lasted until we got it in the can and just had finished it up and she passed away. But she wanted to make sure, because her, her husband, had, who was mom's brother, had written all the material. And she was very upset because she felt mom's never gave him the credit he deserved. So there, it's, you know, it's all kinds of stuff, but it was, it was great because she was, listen, she did a couple of my favorite jokes that even in 1990, I couldn't do on the first comedy, American Comedy Awards. Moms did a joke. Two old ladies walking down the street. One turns to the other one and said, I smell hair burning. The other one said, maybe we're walking too fast. They're like, cut, no. You cannot tell that joke on television. <laughs> I thought it was clean. I thought it was a great clean joke. You couldn't tell that joke on television and you couldn't tell this one, which is the two guys in the house, you know, they're smoking that, those, you know, them cigarettes, them funny cigarettes, and they're smoking and they, and they hear bang, 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 and open the door at the police. And one guy looks at the other one and says, what are we gonna do, man, it's the police. He said, well, Quick, hide the stuff. So they go around and they hide everything in there. Say, oh, I know where I'm gonna put it in the cuckoo clock. So he hides it in the cuckoo clock. And the police come in and they say, where's everything? We know you got stuff here. And say, no, look around, man, look around. And he looked around and said, well, you can't find nothing. Well, we know you got it. We know you got it. He said, well, man, the cops are gone. Come, come on, go get the stuff. Say, I can't get the stuff to the cuckoo cuckoos. So they wait one hour, two hours, Four hours, the door slowly opens on the cuckoo clock, and the cuckoo comes out and says, Hey, man, what time is it? <laughs> and you couldn't tell that joke either. <laughs>